Tarzan of the Apes. Brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' immortal book. <laughs> the jungle is uneasy. Brutish instinct warns against this invasion by humans. And the small apes, chattering excitedly, take to the slender branches of the tall trees. Perched high in the twisted branches of an hour tree, Tarzan watches with resentful interest, waiting to see whether or not these M-E-N will heed the warning he has fixed on the door of his hut. His hut. He clenches and unclenches his hands as he thinks of what he will do to them if they dare to invade his domain. Daddy! Oh, Daddy! What was that? Tarzan leans forward. That voice is different. He brushes aside the sheltering leaves of the aloe tree and stares fixedly at Jane Porter. His heart beats faster. Something he knows not what stirs in his breast. This, this M-A-N is not like the other. It is like terror, more great. Tarzan's eyes eagerly follow Jane's every movement. With effortless ease, he reaches above him, pulls himself to a higher branch to better his view. The difference between Jane and the others puzzles him. Instinctively, he feels it, wrecks his brain, seeking a comparison. Lithe, graceful, like Sabor the lioness, compared to Numa, her lord and master. More like the she's of Mongol's village, where he gets his arrow. And he touches the quiver on his back that reminds him he will have to go there again soon. Brave the horrors of that cannibal crowd and plunder the chief's hut for a fresh supply. He looks again at Jane. That must be it. This M-A-N must be a S-H-E. All the resentment against the invasion of his home falls away from Tarzan. If she is to use his hut, then they can all use it unmolested. Tarzan reaches out, grasps the tough stem of a giant ivy vine, and with scarcely the disturbance of a leaf, drops rapidly hand over hand to the spongy moss floor of the jungle carpet. Moving the tall grasses and shrub plants, he skirts the clearing about the hut. With the caution born of the jungle, silently, stealthily, Tarzan creeps toward the approaching party. Well, those blighters seem to stop firing. Uh, uh, yes, yes. I'm glad, too. It's, it's frightfully annoying. I suppose the next thing to do is to get ourselves out of sight of those pirates and make preparations to defend our lives if they come ashore. Hadn't we better get this stuff out of the boat and take it somewhere? May I make a suggestion? Oh, that's 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 true. True. Then, uh, Since Mr. Clayton here is an army man, and we seem to be embarked on a sort of Robinson Crusoe or a Swiss family Robinson affair... I would humbly suggest that Mr. Clayton be appointed head of the party. Well, now, I feel I that I'm not the most... Uh, Harry! Ah, uh, Clayton, now you must assume the responsibility. I'm in favor of it. It'll leave me to pursue my archaeological investigations unhampered by petty details. But I am much more interested in something to eat just at present. Well, then I say... Let us eat. Cecil, you are a man after my own heart. <laughs> he may be a man after your heart... But he's the man Shakespeare must have had in mind when he said, Let good digestion wait on appetite. I'm as hungry as a bear. Well, then, here is a can of beans. Oh, horrors. Does the first meal have to be beans? Well, here are some canned sausage. Oh, and some hard biscuits. A meal for a king. I'm really quite hungry myself. Cecil, open this can for me, will you please? Certainly. And I think if we use water from one bottle at a time, we can keep track of our supply more easily. Your glass, Professor. Uh, my glass? Oh, oh uh, this tin mug. <laughs> Thank you, Clayton. Thank you. What is that? Oh, I don't know. It might be anything. Uh, a moose stick. Uh, moose stick. Oh, my What's wrong, Daddy? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, why, uh, uh, what's uh, wrong, eh? Uh, what, what that might be? I asked you what you were annoyed about. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, why, I've mislead one of my books. Oh. <laughs> well, Daddy, we have just escaped with our lives. Here we are, stranded on the west coast of Africa, and you are worried about a book. Uh, but, but it's a, a, a very fine book, my dear. Uh, one by Professor... Professor... 
on, I can't for the life of me remember the man's name. Uh, but it's about, uh, uh, let me see now, what is it about? Well, well, I don't recall the title, but its subject matter is of undeniable interest. Well, Professor, it will soon be dark. I think we ought to see about getting some sort of a shelter ready for the night. I don't like to build a fire so close to the jungle, but at the same time, we have to think about wild animals. Wouldn't we be safe on the beach? I don't like the idea of being within gunshot of those pirates. Uh, there now. That's the sort of thing I like. Uh, by the way, uh, where's Philander? Uh, he wandered up shore. He could look out for himself. I uh, do I hope. Don't be too sure about Philander. He is as helpless as a child. Why, the number of times I've had to look out for him. Uh, he's a regular old fossil sometimes. Hey! Hey! What's the matter? There have been people here before us. Just like Philander. Uh, of course there have. Hadn't I told you that the theory of the land of the two rivers being the cradle of civilization is erroneous? Haven't I always maintained that here in Africa lived the prehistoric man? Listen to me, Professor Archimedes Q. Porter. I'm not talking about prehistoric man. I'm talking about a hut. A hut? Why, that's amazing. How could it... Well, someone must... Look, look, here it is. Years ago, this must have been quite a clearing. Say, there's a notice on the door. This solves our difficulties for the night, anyway. What does the notice say? Uh, uh, don't touch it, Philander. It may prove to be a very valuable document. It is a very valuable warning, if it's true. Listen. This is the home of Tarzan, the killer of many beasts. Do not harm the things that are Tarzan. Tarzan watches, and it's signed Tarzan of the Apes. Yes, what can it mean? I don't know, but it's obviously many years since the cabin was built. Uh, uh, but that warning is recent. See, see, it is not even faded. Why, Professor, the paper's yellowed with age. Bother the paper, the writing. I mean, I mean, the printing is fresh. There doesn't seem to be anybody inside. Uh, then I suggest that we all take possession. I agree, Professor. In just a few minutes, it will be dark. We ought to get as much of our gear up from the boat as possible. Oh, I'm so thrilled. Let's go in. All afternoon, Tarzan watches the party unload their boats. But especially, he watches James. Save for the incessant chatter of brightly plumed birds and the occasional bellow of some beast at the waterhole, the jungle is quiet. The slanting rays of the dying sun, as it sinks into the foam-flecked waters of the Atlantic, lights the depth of the jungle with a ruddy glow, while high overhead, the locked branches of giant trees, like the apse of some vaulted cathedral, are lost in purple shadow. The jungle twilight is short-lived. In one last blaze of light, the sun dips over the rim of the world. Night falls swiftly on the primeval forest. And still Tarzan watches. A lantern is lighted in the hut. It shines through the blackness like the reflected light from the facets of a diamond. Tarzan stirs. It's time for him to seek his leafy bed. But interest, interest in Jane is stronger than the wooing of sleep. He rises to his feet. His bronze body melts into the friendly shadows as he moves noiselessly toward the hut. But what of Yant and his rascally crew of cutthroats? What of Tracy, who has finally reached the ship with a map of the hidden treasure? Yant has ordered out a boat, loaded it with picks and shovels, and with the map clutched in his grasping fingers, has brought his gang of ruffians ashore. According to this map... We go 150 paces north from this rock, then 50 paces east, then 15 paces south, and she should be there. Don't say how many feet down, though. The only way to find that out is to dig. So get busy. Who are you hoarding of? Oh, 
Ain't you going to do no digging? I'll have you understand, Snipes. I'm captain here. Listen to him, Mike. Captain. And what about Trifle? Ain't he... He's only alive because I need a navigating officer. But if he tries any monkey business, it'll be curtains for him. And it'll be the same for any man that tries any monkey business with Captain Young. Now come on now. Show some speed. Get digging. Oh. You ain't going to take a shovel, eh? Huh? No, you limey swab. All right, then. If you won't take a shovel, you'll take a pickaxe. 